In this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to make a cool long shadow in Photoshop using a new drop shadow method. So we're going to create first whatever background you want. So I have a rectangle with a little noise layer or a noise filter applied to it. You can make whatever color background you want. Then we need to add some text. So I'm going to press T for the type tool. That's this T icon in your tool panel. I'm going to click out here and add the word uh, shadow. So we've got shadow out here. Now I'm going to scale this up just by grabbing the move tool, pressing command or control T on my keyboard and scaling up this text, which will basically scale up the size of the text. I'm going to place it in the center of my document and press the return key. Now I'm going to set a smart object or turn this into a smart object. So I'm going to go up to filter down to convert for smart filters. I'm going to hit OK on this guy. Now we have a re-editable piece of text that we can kind of share these attributes between different layers. So what we have inside of this smart object, if we double click on the thumbnail, and I would recommend you do this, double click on it, we have this editable section here. Now we can change the size of the canvas here. It doesn't have to be locked into the size of our text. So what I like to do is go ahead and do that by going up to image down to canvas size and then we're going to do 1920 by 1080 so whatever your main canvas size is i would create the same size here hit ok now i can work within this space and edit this text however i'd like without having it cut off so we're going to click the x button on this document it'll prompt us to save it we will save it uh, basically that is the smart object of this text layer so we've got this shadow here. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer by holding Option or Alt, clicking and dragging. We'll duplicate that layer. So we have two different layers here, right? So we have the text layer, and then we have, and I'm just double clicking in here to rename these, the shadow layer. The shadow layer, we do want this color, which is black. We just want it to be dark. The text layer, I want to be a different color. So I'm gonna double click in this blank space out here, click on color overlay, and I'm gonna actually leave it on white, but you could select whatever color you want here for your text color and hit okay. Now this one down here, we don't have to edit anything on that. So to get back to that effect, you can drop down this arrow on that text layer. Just double click on color overlay if you ever wanna change the main text color. Now underneath this text layer, if we click the hide button, you see we still have that shadow layer that has the same text which by the way is editable, that's why we made it a smart object. However, this shadow layer here that we have, we can actually apply a path blur to this to create this cool long shadow effect. So we go up to filter with that layer selected, then we go down to blur gallery, path blur. Now this enters into a blur gallery mode. You'll see all the windows on your uh, screen change a little bit, so your workspace is different. At the top, we're gonna check mark high quality, and this is where you'll hit the OK button when you're done, because you might notice our layers actually went away as well. Now over here on the right, we need to make sure we're in the path blur settings. We could do basic blur, or you could try, well, I don't even know what this one is. I just keep it on basic blur, but you could try any of these settings if you want. One thing we do need to do is uh, turn off centered blur. So we turn that off for starters. Next, you might notice this little path here. You can actually edit this path by clicking on the point and uh, basically choosing the direction of your drop shadow. So I'm gonna go down and to the right with my shadow. And then we have three settings here, speed, taper, and end point speed. Each of these changing a little bit of the shadow. So we can increase the end point speed, which basically kind of stretches out the end point of the shadow. And we can increase the speed or decrease the speed of the entire shadow and then also increase or decrease the taper, which as you do that, you'll see the shadow become a lot more realistic and dynamic. So this creates this long shadow effect. You can make these adjustments with your speed as much as you want, and then also the taper to kind of finish that shadow off. And once you have it where you like it, you can hit OK. We've got this pretty cool shadow effect. Now, there's a couple of things here that you can do. Uh, number one, you can actually change the blend mode of this layer. So the shadow layer here, we could change the blend mode from normal to one of these other modes. I really like the mode soft light. 
Uh, and you can stack these shadows on top of each other. So either overlay or soft light kind of brings some of the color into the shadow. So it's not just a black shadow. It actually has some of the blues in it. And then you can always adjust the opacity. You can hold Option or Alt to duplicate the shadow layer again. And that will kind of double up the effect. And then you could bring down the opacity on like the top layer. If you wanted somewhere in between... Uh, the very light soft light blend mode and doubled up you can kind of pull the opacity down of one of these to get the look that you're going for so this is a pretty cool method that you can add to your text oh and by the way that text is editable so all of these are shared smart objects which means I can double click on the thumbnail of any of them and I can actually change uh, the wording here so instead of shadow we could put like drop or something. Uh, that's a random word. I was thinking drop shadow, but I realized it was going to be too long. So we'll just do that. Uh, you can just hit the X button. And it'll prompt you to save. Or maybe we got to click out of the type mode and then do that. It'll say, hey, save this. We got to save it. And then it will just edit or update all of your uh, different smart objects over here. So now they actually all include, or they've all been edited. So they all... Uh, include the word that you just typed in. So that's why they're a smart object, because the shadow also edits. So it doesn't really matter what you put in there. Uh, we could go back in and type in some different text in all caps. We could come in here and even change the font. You could try some different things out. So if you wanted to change the font up a little bit, um, and that's a terrible font for this, but we'll put in shadow again. And then we'll just click off of this Make sure we save it and it will update. So it'll update all that text. And there you go. You have your long shadow still. So those are some different effects over here. Now you can minimize all of this. If you actually, one of the things you'll want to know here is the text layer. If you move that, the shadow layer does not move. So you're going to want to link those together or at least put them in a group. Uh, you could select all of these layers by holding shift and clicking from the top to the bottom and then right click and go to link layers. So now as you move the text around, the position is linked. And if you were to scale up the text, so command or control T, we can scale the text up and down. That is linked as well. Now we had some issues there. So the shadow went away. So you might find some issue with linking it, which that that's, might be something we ran into in this tutorial. So the other thing that you can do is actually hold shift and then click down and uh, select all three again, and then right click and go to group layers. And so group layers should be somewhere in here. There it is, group from layers up here at the top. So we've created a group. We can name the group if we want, we can hit okay. So now we have a group that we can move around if we don't accidentally select only that text because we have auto select on. So turn auto select off. Now with that group selected, we can move the whole group around. We should be able to scale it up and down, but there could be an issue with scaling those smart object effects. No, okay, so the group was fine, but linking the layers had issue. So I would recommend just doing the group, but sometimes you can link layers, just kind of depends. So there you go. There's a cool long drop shadow effect here in Adobe Photoshop.